what they really meant to say was mutated, recombined, hybridized, isolates. And that by 1970, they reported having distributed these 70,000 different strains of viruses to well over 500 research laboratories throughout the world. And among their principal distributors of these viruses was none other than the National Cancer Institute in Bethesda and the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta. And you see, when I saw that it was the National Cancer Institute in Bethesda, a red flag came up for me. If you folks want to dim the light or turn this light off, just if that's not too much of a problem, just for a couple minutes while I talk about a little bit of the slides. You see, this is the home of the infamous Dr. Robert Gallo, who allegedly discovered the AIDS virus in 1984. You remember this? This was the, when the, what prompted the French-American AIDS practice. It was turned out that within weeks of Dr. Robert Gallo and Margaret Heckler announcing Dr. Gallo's find a feather in the cap of American medicine, doctor at the National Cancer Institute, Dr. Robert Gallo, discovered the cause of AIDS. It's a virus. Then the United States patented everything having to do with AIDS, virus research, and testing. And then France ended up suing the United States when shortly thereafter it was determined that Gallo cloned, stole Luc Montagnier's virus from France. And France ended up suing the United States. It was resolved about a couple years ago when around the same time President Clinton pardoned Robert Gallo for scientific misconduct on another unrelated matter, whenever does a president of the United States pardon a health scientist? That's a little weird. But it happened to be the fourth time in three decades that Dr. Robert Gallo had been investigated for scientific misconduct and or fraud and had escaped, gotten off. So I immediately began to suspect Dr. Robert Gallo. I said, well, maybe I should go look at see what Robert Gallo was doing between 1965 and 19, 1975. And so I go back and I look up Gallo in Index Medicus, Harvard's Countway Medical Library. And what you see here is one of six pages. It's called the Scientific Literature Review that I've reprinted in the book, Emerging Viruses, AIDS, and Ebola, where there was nothing in 65 that Gallo published. There was nothing in 66, 67, there were two publications. 68, there were four. 60, um, 69, there were two. 70, there were three. And 71, there were eight. Aha, just a coincidence, you see, that as the money kicked in for the Department of Defense, Robert Gallo's laboratory output more than doubled. Coincidence? Maybe, maybe not. And I began to read. And what were these people writing? Well, they were studying things that are very suspicious indeed. Here, this is from the journal Nature. By the way, because of what I am telling you, you also know to be so unbelievable. The concept that the United States government had something to do with the development of the immune system ravaging viruses, AIDS virus, Ebola virus, that most people can't believe this. See, as a behavioral scientist, as a behavioral science expert, I knew most human beings who evolved, who developed, because of loving parents who instilled ethics and morals and values could not conceive of this level of evil that they would never believe it. If you leave here today, I guarantee you nine out of ten people that you speak and you tell them about this, you will see a window shade of disbelief come across their eyes and you know you're no longer talking to a human being with ears. And so, knowing that ahead of time, as a behavioral science expert, I said, I got to reprint the most incriminating documents so that it is totally there. It is no question. And so, this is one of numerous documents that you see reprinted in the book, Emerging Viruses, AIDS, and Ebola, where this is from the journal Nature, 1970. And you see Robert C. Gallo from the National Cancer Institute. You see Robert C. Ting, Robert C. Ting from Bionetics Research Labs, Bethesda, Maryland. And it turned out that about a third of what Dr. Robert Gallo published, he published with Bionetics researchers. Have you ever heard of Litton Industries, folks? You know, Litton has L-I-T-T-O-N. They have uh, microwave ovens. A lot of people know them from their microwave ovens. But besides microwave ovens, they're a highly diversified company. They're heavily involved. Interestingly enough, they are among always the leader, leading military weapons contractors for the world. And they had a subsidiary, a medical subsidiary called Litton Bionetics, Bionetics Research Labs, which was 
a documented biological weapons contractor. And you see that Dr. Robert Gallo, about a third of 25% to 30% of what he published, he published, co-authored with these people. Now here what they're studying, without getting too technical, is an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. It's actually, the technical name is RNA-dependent DNA polymerase of human acute leukemic cells. That is a unique enzyme called reverse transcriptase. It calls for life to operate in reverse, this enzyme does. What, in God's war universe, calls for life to operate in reverse? Something satanic, in my opinion, don't you think? Well, you see, that's exactly what this enzyme does. You see, typically, God created everything in the universe, in particularly life, all forms of life, to operate out of the same unique, magnificent system designed to perfection beyond the reaches of the wildest imaginations. And it's all based, he created this thing called DNA, the blueprint of life, the code. And you see, in God's magnificent cells and tissues, what it calls for is that DNA is to be taken, and from DNA, this blueprint, new RNA is created, which then serves to bring and establish proteins, amino acids and proteins, to the protein manufacturing station of the cell called the ribosome. And it is here where proteins are built, new cell parts are built, and new cells, healthy, happy cells, evolve. So it goes, the God's magnificent system goes DNA to RNA to new proteins to new cell parts to new life. This enzyme says, uh-uh, we're not going to have that anymore. We're going to go backwards. We're going to take a single strand of RNA that the virus is going to present. And because of the presence of this unique reverse transcriptase, a new DNA strand gets created. It's called a DNA provirus. And because of the presence of another very interesting enzyme, it's called an endonuclease. It's like a scissors. It cuts open God's magnificent code for life, and it allows this new DNA strand to get inserted so that now when the perfect cell begins to read this code, this message for how to create new life, it gets fooled. It calls for the production of more viruses instead of healthy cell parts. And that these viruses butt off the cells. And because of these unique proteins on the outside membrane, they're called GP120-like proteins, like little balls here, you see? Through lock and key fashion, they seek out other cells, CD4 helper cells, T lymphocytes, the quarterbacks of the immune system. And they attach to these and they continue this process. Now, this is being done by Robert Gallo and his associates from Bionetics Research, and they're studying this in acute, human acute, that's quick-acting leukemia cells. This is in 1970, folks. This is 14 years before this man allegedly discovered the first AIDS virus. This is the enzyme that makes the AIDS virus tick. This is also the enzyme that makes the leukemia virus work. And this is nine years before this man allegedly discovered the first leukemia virus, HTLV-1. And, as I said, his co-authors from Lytton Bionetics just happened to be sixth on the list of major Army biological weapons contractors at that time. This is directly from the United States Congressional Record. And, as you see also, for those sitting in front and highlighted in yellow, is the New York University Medical Center. Remember that. I'm going to come back to that. There will be a quiz at the end of this program. <laughs> and those who fail the quiz, it may cost you your life, literally. So what else were they doing and publishing? Well, they were the world's preeminent experts in monkey cancer virus research. And what they were doing in not only monkeys but primates, man as well, was they were taking these viruses that they knew would cause cancer. For example, they took woolly monkey viruses and rhesus monkey viruses, including this thing called SV40, simian virus 40. It was the 40th monkey virus ever discovered. And you see, this virus was discovered by a 
really wonderful human being, a wonderful woman by the name of Bernice Eddy. She found